Christmas, the raindrops fall and the beauty of it all and the sun Is this our theme song? <laughs> to make the rainbow in my mind I don't know, this is like, when the band isn't here, this is what you get. You get like, easy listening and groovy. What? Make it if we try, just the two of us, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> the two of us, building castles in the sky, just the two of us, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> we just need a sunset. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a... Yeah, so that was, that was a romantic start to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, we're all kind of tired. We can just like sing, just, just sing, cuddle, just, this will turn into a cuddle party. That's right, oh, just sing, <laughs> sing us lullabies. Um, <laughs> you, you jumped up out of your seat. <laughs> That's, I did, I know. I, and you jumped up and started taking your clothes off. Um, <laughs> Domino effect. Yeah. <laughs> to take our clothes off? <laughs> what was that? I said your job is to take our clothes off? <laughs> okay, this took a quick turn. <laughs> yeah, not really. Have you met this fandom? Uh, well, it was actually consensual. Uh, <laughs> when creation. That's <laughs> 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 Okay, me first? Okay. I lost my virginity. No. No, I'm not. Yes. I didn't tell that story. Um, yes. Uh, put it in the book that you were talking about? Great. That'll be the, uh, that's how it starts. Um, <laughs> Yes. It would be it's so funny because, like. <laughs> yes. So the thing I was thinking. Are you you want to talk? I mean, you want to start with? <laughs> this just turned into uh, truth or dare and spit the bottle. Uh, like, uh, okay. No, but here's what's scary: is okay. like I'm one of those You're people. Paid. I will just answer. Yeah. But no, what I was going to say was. Now I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> We're doing first time. I mean, I would, we could. I don't know. There is no hard and fast rule against. Or sorry. Well, um, <laughs> there's totally hard and fast. Yeah. So yeah, hard and fast. But <laughs> okay, we should probably. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, so what I was the, the segue I was going to make the really appropriate segue was earlier. I got really excited. Now it's going to all sound wrong. <laughs> Well, there you go. You got excited. <laughs> and? Past, I got excited. And? I got excited. Yes, go on. When you said the little, the factoid about the mouse, because oh. I'm just such a geek that, like, I actually worked at a zoo for a while. I love those kind of facts. But now it sounds like I'm talking about bestiality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please talk about mice some more, Misha. <laughs> I don't know if I have many more factoids about mice, but I can tell you that um, my daughter Mason is uh, she he, she has decided that her favorite animal is is the bat. Nice. Uh, so, which is a, a flying mouse, basically. Yes. And they actually can make good pets. Well. And what? They eat bugs. They eat bugs. I, I know. And people. I know. <laughs> They don't eat people. <laughs> That's not true. They're amazingly cuddly, but they can carry diseases. 
Okay, well, I'll just choose. And their poo is worth a lot of money sometimes. Bad, bad guana because of, uh, first of all, it has some good qualities. Phosphorus. What? Get her a bath. Turn her into an entrepreneur. Or potash? It's good for fertilizer. Oh, yeah. Plant fertilizer. Well, I don't know if you and guys know this. Yes, I mean, in World War I, uh, they sent all kinds of uh, Navy vessels to the, um, the Galapagos Islands and far-flung places like that to collect bird shit because they used it to make explosives. Um, because it had a lot of phosphorus in it. <laughs> nitrogen? Damn, I don't know nitrogen. Ah. It had a lot of explosiveness. Yeah. <laughs> one of the underlying causes of World War I. One of the underlying causes of World War I was the scarcity of bird shit. <laughs> bird shit. Exploding bird food. I love this how all over the map we are. This is amazing. We were like the first time and bat shit. <laughs> or bat shit crazy. Um, maybe that's where that expression came from. Yeah. Um, this is a panel to remember. Yes. Let's try to forget it though. <laughs> As representatives of Random Acts, uh, yeah. we are here to tell you about our first time. Uh, oh. 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 Is that the cuddle party girl again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you hear? What was that? Was it a random? Was it a random? Like, was it a random act? Yeah. Yeah. Random act. <laughs> I think I'm like probably red and splotchy at this point. <laughs> oh, you were blushing. Great. Oh, awesome. <laughs> because it was a random act? It's, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is what, like, you know, my siblings used to do. Like, you, they would know when I was either embarrassed, upset, or turned Why? on. Because uh, I've got Irish skin. That's something that you don't so you your know siblings I to know. <laughs> Um, should we turn to, we, if we ask them to ask us questions, maybe it can get us a, a Okay, back uh, please help us. Yes. You're a jerk. <laughs> Hi, I'm Valerie. Hi, um, Valerie or Mallory? Valerie. Hi, Valerie. Yeah. Um, so, speaking of random acts, this, this is actually kind of a question. Um, sorry, I'm really nervous. Um, I'm not. <laughs> not at all. My chest is lying to you. <laughs> Uh, far so it. it's made a really big impact in my life, and it's caused me to like reflect and think about how I you know, go about my day to day. And I was just wondering, like, how it's changed your guys' life, or if it's like made you rethink how you go through life. No. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Jenny, uh, we'll we'll roll back to Jenny with like. Genuinely, it has changed my life in every way, so much for the better. I've never been happier, uh, more at peace, or um, existence has never felt more correct to me than getting to do this job. Um, I, and it's really, it's in the community, it's in all of, working with all of you. Um, so a hidden gem about Random Acts to me is that it's not just about the good that we do in the world, it's about the way we change each other and the way we change ourselves by just knowing that you belong and you're of service. And that's the most empowering thing. So that's what I get to see every single day now is I watch all of you changed and empowered by being able to do something that's important in the world. And I feel like it's revolutionary because we're literally like, we're getting to uh, stick our middle fingers up, so to speak, at society and the status quo and everything that tells us, no, it's not supposed to be a kind world, it's a tooth and claw, look out for yourself only kind of world. And we're saying, no, no, I'm just gonna be nice and be good to someone for no reason. I, I love the fact that I'm not going to make any money off of that. I just want to make the world better. Uh, and I think that that changes society forever. So, yeah, that's me. If we could only figure out a way to monetize that, <laughs> we'd be set. <laughs> totally. Exactly. That's the plan. Um, I, uh, I think there's, a, there's you know, a growing body of science supporting um, 
the experiment that we're on in terms of happiness. Um, you, the, the more uh, grateful you are and the more appreciative and the more generous you are, in general, the happier you are. There's a real correlation between those things, um, which is kind of a remarkable thing. Like Taking care of other people or being attentive to other people is actually a very selfish act, if you think about it, because it's a way to make yourself happier. Um, and I think that that probably is obvious to most people, but it was an epiphany to me. Um, one of the things that really bowled me over <clears throat> about some of the um, early, the bigger projects that we did, like the building the orphanage that I mentioned earlier in Haiti, um, I had this, I think, probably naive and uh, self-absorbed uh, idea of what that project was going to be like, which is there are other people in the world who are in need, and I'll marshal some resources and bring some people along with me to go help those people, and it was this sort of one-sided transactional framework, and <clears throat> we went down there as a group, and I noticed that actually it was probably more beneficial to the people who were traveling down to Haiti than it was for the Haitians whom we set out to help in the first place. And that was a real eye-opener to me, um, seeing how much being of service can be of service to yourself. Um, and it's something that I try to remember and often forget. Uh, take a moment and make Misha uncomfortable by just acknowledging like it's a really amazing thing that you started and that you allowed me to be a part of and I remember on being on set not long after you started Random X and I tried to give you like a really genuine acknowledgement of like this is so brilliant and so wonderful what you're doing and Misha like you in true fashion uh, went Something like ah, and made a joke and you know turned it away, but um, but it really is. And genuinely, I've admired that for years. And thank you for letting me be a part of it. So. Thank you. I tried to think of a joke just now, and my mind went blank. Rick <laughs> both an opportunity. Um, uh, thank you, H. Well, I I was just um, we uh, this won't turn into like a mutual admiration society. I promise, but. I was just thinking how grateful I am that you are like, you know, devoting your time and energy right now to doing this work and, and the, all of the volunteers at Random Acts. Like, we have people all over the world who are doing, you know, live working and, 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 and putting in their time um, for no money. You're getting, I mean, you get a lot, of, well, no, you get no money. Um, <laughs> um, but there's, um, it's like a lot of people who are, doing a lot of work to make things happen and that's really um, lovely to see and, and I do feel like a little bit of like, oh, it's really nice to see this thing that I um, started on a little bit of, as a lark and a little bit as an experiment that to actually like gained enough traction that it actually exists and is a real legal entity. That's really amazing. Um, but I was just feeling really grateful for you for being foolish enough to join in. Thank you. Yeah. on every hiring at Random Mac, and I took myself off because I cannot stay in the hiring everyone. <laughs> I wrote like, yeah, I can't do it. So, all of you. You in the blue shirt back there, yes. <laughs> so, obviously... So, obviously, everybody here has varying levels of obsession with seeing So I was wondering if you guys have ever been obsessed with anything to some degree. I mean, okay. what would it be? <laughs> Probably not this. Not supernatural. Or maybe it is. I don't know. I've been, I have kind of an obsessive personality. So like, 
I, for me, it's usually intellectual subjects. So I'll get obsessed with, like, say the TED Talks. I watched every TED Talk in existence for a while. Uh, and, then, and then I kind of cycle out. Or I was obsessed with France for a while. I had to learn all of French history, learn French. I didn't want to see anything but French movies. And then I was like, okay, that's like, there's a, there's a saturation point, and then I move on. Uh, but I have a very, I, I do that a lot, mostly with study. Um, that, it's pretty cool that you were a fangirl of a country. <laughs> I, but I also went through China and Japan and, yeah, all of Buddhist history. Wow, that's amazing. I feel really uneducated all of a sudden. <laughs> um, I have been, my, I think my biggest fan kind of thing was with uh, NPR, for some reason. That is fucking nerdy. Like, uh, I was, it was partly because I was raised not watching television, um, and on my mother's old uh, LPs. So I didn't actually, like, I, I was more or less cut off from pop culture, um, and so I, I guess I liked Michael Jackson when I was um, nine. Uh, I had one glove. He was my first crush. Yeah. After Big Bird. <laughs> That's about right. Yeah. I heard Michael Jackson on the radio yesterday, and I was like, what, what fucking DJ is still playing Michael Jackson? So weird. Um, in case you didn't form abreast of what's happening with Michael Jackson, he's no longer considered cool. Um, I, so I was a big fan of um, NPR. <clears throat> what just, show? I listened to, I listened initially, I mean, NPR did not used to have, you know, when I was in high school, NPR didn't have a huge array of shows. It was like morning edition. I grew edition up with it, my, my father was obsessed with it. So. Yeah. Um, there were, um, and the, the ones, yeah, so anyway, there was, there was a, it wasn't like Did there was Did you ever this, listen to On Being with Krista Tippett? Yeah, but I don't. That on being not, wasn't around. I don't think back then late, no, was it? It was like later. it was fresh air. I mean, I'm talking like late '80s, okay. like a long time ago. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> talk, Car Talk was on at the time <laughs> with Click and Clack, the Tabbit Brothers, Tom and Ray Mariachi, or whatever their names are. Um, I love that there are people who actually are into this. <laughs> but I, I, I had this very cool experience, which was um, I somebody asked me the exact same question that you asked because it's, it's very derivative. And um, <laughs> oh, boy, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's your first time. Oh, now I feel even worse. <laughs> Shit. I'm just kidding. I, nobody has ever asked that question. Okay, that's not true, because I have no, to tell he, you. He was just kidding about feeling bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I was on stage. Somebody asked me something that was along the lines of if you, could have any, uh, if you could have lunch with anybody who's living or something like that, who would it be? And I said, it would be Bob Garfield, who was this uh, NPR personality who had done these stories in the late, um, in, the, in, the, in the 90s. Uh, and maybe even late 80s that I had loved. And I was like, I want to be like that guy when I grow up because he really fucked with the form. And I said that on stage, and then two days later, I got a phone call from Bob Garfield because his Twitter had blown up. And I was like, oh my God, I tried to act cool. I was not cool at all. <laughs> but now we're friends. And I, he, I just got an email from him an hour ago. It's totally all like we're working on projects together. And, um, and like, yeah, I, I, anyway, so um, it's been a real, that was like a really, really exciting moment. I sent him a letter, I don't even know if he knows this, but I sent him a letter when I was like 18 years old asking if I could be his intern. It was like the closest I ever got to writing fan mail. And he wrote me back and said no. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? <laughs> no, but it actually brings me to a point that I think is... Uh, something that we all should acknowledge, which is that often we're drawn to things because we've got a similar like sense of aesthetic or similar things that uh, I, I guess mean something to us in life. So it doesn't. I think that whole separation for me, the separation of like 
being a fan of something versus creating something is not that is not that like different or absurd. What happens is if we think that it's only the, the other person that can create it, and we're not a part of that, and our mind does, and we start selling ourselves short or disempowering ourselves, then we can't connect because we always put them on a pedestal. And and I think it's really interesting when you have stories like that where it's like oh you. There was a reason your intellect was drawn to this thing because you had like there were similar ways that, that you probably thought and you know and you took you kind of owning your own creativity and starting to create in the world and then that was recognized. And, uh, wow, that wow. I mean that's very lovely to hear. I mean I love the idea if that isn't all true. Um, I <laughs> I it's like oh that would be amazing if I was at all like Bob Garfield. Um, he, he had this incredible capacity to just make insane things happen because he didn't care about what people thought. So he would, he did this one story, it was like Bob Garfield, um, Bob Garfield goes to Nashville was the story. And he, and he did I ever share these stories with you? Yeah. Uh, there's like three, three radio stories that I love. But anyway, he, Bob Garfield goes to Nashville for a conference on something related to radio, not related to music. And he's like, you know, country music songs seem pretty formulaic. How hard is it to write a hit country music song? And so he walked into a recording studio and said, hey, I'm in town for this other thing, but I thought I'd hit, record a hit country music song. <laughs> and they're like, well, well are you a musician? No, but you know, I'm sure we could find somebody to put this together. And he ends up writing a story about <clears throat> phone tag um, back in the days before you had like all where you only had like an answering machine and the story ends with Jimmy Carter getting in touch with Willie Nelson to have him record the song <laughs> it's totally amazing it's so great yeah yeah but isn't that like that is because you, you like sociology and all the, like to me it is like the quintessential, just like how do we play, there aren't rules, how do we yeah. mess with this now thing the, that's considered societal structure and the like protocol we're all supposed to go through. And, yeah, yeah, and questioning that. Yeah. Questioning the assumptions. That's right. Um, the project that we're, he and I are working on right now is um, the, called the Purple Project. And it's purple because it's not red or blue. It's just, it's about civic engagement and trying to get people to think about and talk about and care about politics, no matter what their political persuasion is, but also to get people to have faith in the political institutions again, like to rebuild a trust in the civil society that is, has been crumbling lately. Um, and it feels like this insanely, anyone else, were anyone else to approach me with the concept, I would be like, no, that's not going to work. But I was like, well, you're the guy that got Willie Nelson to record a song, <laughs> so let's do this. That's awesome. Yeah. And I have to pick someone? Yeah. I'm going like, to disappoint so many people. Okay, in the purple shirt, you. Yeah, the, the one, yeah, you're looking around. Pink, right? pink. Pink, pink, sorry. No, you that are still looking around, is yeah. it was, it was yeah. you. You have a... I a, promise, I'm a, picking you. Okay. Now she's got the microphone. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's okay, you're good. Hi, so my name is Jen, and this is actually my first con, and thank you so oh. much for giving me a great time. And I actually have a question for Nisha. And, um, Wait, but I picked you. <laughs> you too. Let me give you two different questions. Good. Uh, I remember you went to Japan a couple years ago, or was it last year? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was last year or the year before. <laughs> um, so, what was like your favorite place in Japan, or your favorite moment? It was two years ago. It was, well, was it? It was, a, it was July, it was two Julys ago. So it was one year, three months ago. And then it was two years prior to that as well. 
17, so 15 and 17. You're looking at me like I'm stupid, so. You're I doing math. Wanna... Okay. Can it, it, math do you ever hard. do this? Because it's the scary thing is I don't remember well, except, like I kind of remember like consecutively when things happen, but I'm not good with years. But I'll Google myself to figure out, like to find a shot or something where I'm like, oh, that's where I was. Right. And then the next time you open your phone in front of a friend, you're like, oh, no, I wasn't Googling Rachel Minor. That, uh, it's, it looks bad every time. <clears throat> um, what was my favorite what? Your, either your favorite play or your favorite moment when you were there. Well, uh, I saw some amazing, I, I saw an incredible installation by Michelle Gondry, an art installation at the Tokyo uh, Modern Art Museum that was amazing. And it made me want to go back, well, made me go back and watch all of his films. He's really an amazing artist. Um, that was cool. And then I was in, so this was actually the, the trip prior, so it was three years or four years ago. And uh, I was in um, uh, Kyoto with my kids. Oh my god, this was so great. So we were in Kyoto and it was the biggest snowstorm in 50 years. And so we went out and all, and we were, I just had these, like we made the first, the kids' first snowman at a temple in Kyoto. And it was just like the temples covered in snow that aren't normally covered in snow. And it was really beautiful. But we got to Tokyo and the kids, uh, in typical fashion, were obstinate about adjusting to jet lag. So they were just waking up for the day at midnight. And so my experience of Tokyo on that first trip for the first, literally for the first week, was waking up. What? Nothing. <laughs> um, Did she just like regret? No, she was just like having a sidebar conversation. Um, <laughs> she totally was like, I wish I had not asked that ask question. <laughs> Wait, say that again? Japan, but I've never been there. Oh, okay. Um, it's nice. You should go. Okay. Um, cool. So, uh, my experience of Tokyo was um, waking up at midnight, trying to figure out something to do with two small children outside in the winter because they were losing their fucking minds in the hotel room. And then eventually, like, they'd be too hungry and we had to go find breakfast at 3 o'clock in the morning. Which, at that point, the only other people who are out at a restaurant are fucking hammered. <laughs> so we would be in sushi restaurants with like, these guys who were like, smoking cigarettes and trashed. And that was my experience of Tokyo. It was really awesome. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, thank you for coming yes, back, and sorry for being so scary. Um, so, my question was, um, the show with Supernatural is so special, and my question was, what is the special ingredient that Supernatural has that you hope other shows take on? That Because Supernatural is one of a kind, and my, I see myself as like, you know, a successful after because I'm happy with where I am, and that's where I seek, it's like, this make this fulfill me. So I'm hoping to find a project like Supernatural, and I'm wondering how did this come to be, and how would I be able to hopefully bring this onto other shows? How 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 would what come to be? Like something so special that like you know this is one of a kind. Like you have you guys all we can see that you guys have really good chemistry all with the cast. You, we get to see each other, and you guys get to see each other. It's like you guys were like having a family reunion, but with less drama. <laughs> and so it's just, I'm wondering, what makes it so special that this happened? I'm going to say, you have more to offer, I'm sure, but I'm going to say, one, it's a lot of, there is luck involved, but I think there's also a very simple thing, which is like, don't hire assholes. <laughs> uh, and if you don't, and make sure they don't come back, uh, one of the things I noticed, and this could be, I could be totally wrong about this, but I noticed most characters who come onto the show die in the first episode. And so there's kind of a point of like, are they a decent human being? Okay, we can bring them back. But like, 
maybe if they're not, they don't. I don't know if that's true or not, but I always. For wonder. all of the actors uh, who were on Supernatural, <laughs> who were okay. not resurrected after being killed in the first episode, <laughs> it's because you're a bad person. <laughs> We just want to put that out there officially. Uh, yeah, I just thought, yeah. No, I, no one hates me right now. I'm, I basically, I'm evil. No, but but I do think there is something to like. I've never seen a cast and crew with this many uh, kind, decent human beings. And I think then there's always a tension. It's not just like, oh, you're decent to the stars of the show. It's more about like, are you decent to everyone? Um, and it's like, it's a, it's a group with a high capacity for caring and empathy and a lot, and there's not a lot of ego, and there's a willingness to have a sense of humor about self, and I don't know, I guess that's a stop established from the top down early on, um, and, but in terms of like creating that, like, magic combination, I don't know other than being aware if you don't have it. If there's if there's someone who's like trying to sway things in a negative direction, not going that way, no matter how much tr someone tries to sell you on it. And I guess the hope is when I see something like this show be as successful as it is, that that then becomes something you people can use as an example mm -hmm. in the future. I don't. Know. Yeah. Um, I I think also there's something to these. I mean, I, obviously your question is unanswerable because there's a million things that go into it, many of which are like just luck, or this admixture of chemistry and storyline that happened to resonate with a certain moment, and um, the fact that there was nothing else to watch. Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> I think one thing that we, I, I think there were a lot of little steps that we lucked into, and one of them was the convention circuit, and how we happened to randomly choose to interact with fans at conventions. I think maybe it was because none of us watched sci-fi shows or went to conventions or talked to people who did, so we didn't know how we were supposed to act. And so we did something unusual and, had, and, and quickly developed a dynamic with the fans at conventions that, uh, that doesn't, I, I don't think, follow the normal template. Like right. it feels like we're you know, more connected. And because you're also decent enough human beings to actually want to connect. I'm just going to throw that in. Oh, man! Um, yeah, he's not going to take it, but I'm going to throw it. But I, but I think that that's been a factor, because, it, but because this, this community that we have developed feels unusual in and of itself. And I think that that, in turn, has fed the show and helped the show have longevity that it wouldn't have otherwise had, which is, in turn, fed the convention circuit because now it feels like we've known each other for so long that even though we don't really get along, we have to treat each other like family because we literally, I mean, I, I, it, it's so bizarre now meeting people who are, I just saw, met somebody yesterday who was 14 and looked much older, whose mother had been watching the show when she was breastfeeding the child, I sort of, I, I maybe hyperbolized with the breastfeeding, but it's a better image. Um, oh, so there is a child in the room. I, shoot, thank God we didn't talk about first times. Now, are you 14 or 16? You're 14. Would, do you mind standing up, the two of you? I'm sorry to put you on the spot. And in fairness, you didn't talk about breastfeeding, I don't know, but you, if you weren't, you should have been. Um, so, how how old how old were you when your mother? How, actually, let me ask the other way around. Mother, how old were you? Were, was your daughter when you started watching Supernatural? I watched it the night it aired. She nope. was eleven months. She was eleven months. So you were breastfeeding, probably, possibly. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so, so. You, you were 11 months old, and your mother was watching the show, so for you, you watched Jared and Jensen grow up, while your daughter went from infancy to maturity. And then you started watching the show at some point. How old were you? Probably just like 12 or 13. 12 and 13, thank God. That's such a respectable age to start. <laughs> but that's, that's kind of an incredible thing, and you can't, 
you can't like say, you know what I'm going to do on my next on my show um, in order to make it successful. I'll have it last 14 or 15 years, and that way the audience can be intergenerational and get to know and love the characters over time. But I think that's a really special thing that's probably not going to happen for you. I hate to say it. I'm sorry. No, I, just want to end it. I want this to keep going. Oh, this to keep like, going? Yeah, like. Wouldn't it be amazing if, like, your children were watching Supernatural and the three of you came to a convention and I'm, I, 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 I'm on, like, a, a ventilation machine? Wouldn't that be amazing? Oh my god, really? How old were you when you started watching 17 year old? Oh, you're 14? Yeah. I'm not. Oh, you're 17. Yeah, got it. Wait, so what, when, how old were you? What, were, you, were you watching the show from the beginning? No. You weren't. No, I was watching the show from the beginning. So when she was born, you were watching the show? Jesus. Holy shit! <laughs> Did you guys plan this? This is really weird. And how about you? When did you start watching? Um, a couple months ago, when I watched all three of the Avengers, I Also, very responsible. This is remarkable. <laughs> wow. That's so weird. I don't know. But also, that like, I feel so old. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing thing, and so many, because, like, I'm sure you meet, like, there's so many families that share this that actually it's something that they all love brothers and sisters and siblings and like that's a very very special thing i think i i guess like in terms of what you're saying it's also clocking that this is something we want to create and you do have the ability to create it so i don't you know yes it is a magic scenario and scratch the things i said because i don't know we're trying to i'm trying to like make some sense of it but it's like it doesn't matter if it was just a magic equation what matters is we can go forward into the future and say, hey, that, that worked. That was a really cool thing. Let's try to create more of that. We can create, whether it's communities or films or whatever, we can create communities that are that kind. We can create groups that are, you know, that we're caring about each other it does matter. Um, and I think that is, that is something that we can't take away. And we will continue to do these conventions. They'll come. You guys will come. We will keep doing them. Let's give it up for Misha Collins and Rachel Miner. Go to the random axe table to get your information.